Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I want to start. Hi, my name is Gilad. I work for Red Hat. I'm a co-maintainer in the Ovid project and I'm working for the SLA and scheduling team. Today I'm going to talk about VM <coughs> scheduling within Ovid, how it got evolved and etc. Basically, we'll talk about the problem of scheduling a little bit. Then we'll go ahead and talk about Nova filter schedule concepts, and then we'll deep dive into over scheduling, giving a lot of samples. I think the best way to understand stuff are uh, with through uh, samples. Okay, can you raise your hand if you heard about over it? Yeah, I guess a lot of you are. It's a home crowd. So over it, for those of you who aren't know, do, those of you who don't know what is over it, over it is a, a management platform for VMs based on KVM hypervisors. Can handle thousands of VMs, has live snapshot, live storage migration, live VM migration, live, everything is live basically. And, sorry. We support also advanced network configuration for those hosts and a lot of uh, storage connections, SUN, NFS, cluster, etc. Basically, let's see what we've got a long time ago. Uh, we got the questions from the users list. I urge you to use that list if you have any questions about over it. It's quite, you know, it's quite active. How can I define a maximum number of running VMs per host? Uh, it's pretty trivial, but we didn't support it that yet then. So we get back to it later. I just wanted to say that you should use the users list. OK, what we had in over <coughs> it a uh, long time ago, basically we had two distribution algorithms for uh, running and migrating VMs. When we selected a VM, when we ran a VM, then we selected a host based on CPU load policies, either even distribution uh, CPU load or power saving. And then it's pretty, you know, uh, limited. We have only two distribution algorithms and we can't construct a user defined one. Basically, that is it. Then, uh, we take hi. We take a look. We looked at the Nova scheduler, which is which, which brought us filters and weights. Very simple and easy way to filter uh, uh, to schedule VM on hosts. Basically, the filters are very cut and clear logic that gets a set gets a set of hosts on the left hand side then we run a filter on on them then we apply weight, weights on top of them another cool slide from nova scheduler we collect a, we collect a set of weights then we sum them up and then we order the host that we got let's see a sim a simple sample for nova scheduler uh, this is a RAM filter written in Python. Basically, it's a very simple method that gets a single host data and then and a set of properties and then run a really simple code that either uh, decides if this, this, this host is in the scheduling process or extract excluding, excluding it from the scheduling process uh, according to the requested RAM for that VM. Okay. When we looked at that and took it to the data center virtu virtualization, which is over it, we saw that we have a little bit of problem with that concept because in 
in uh, Nova, <coughs> each filter and weight is applied on a single host. And we have a larger concept of uh, clustering in over it, which is called migration domain. So in, that, in, in the migration domain, each, ho each VM on a host can be migrated to a separate uh, host on that migration domain, that cluster. And we have another concept of load balancing uh, for that cluster. And also a policy container, which a user can decide and create its own policy and apply that on that cluster. So let's take a look what we had in Overt. Basically, we can create internal and external filter and weights. The internal part is used for better performance. We are in, within the server, so we get a quick access to the DB. And originally, all the, all the filter and weights from the previous uh, Overt in, back then when, when we didn't have uh, filters and weight, were migrated into that internal scheduler. And the external that you will, basically all the users can support and extend. Uh, we apply all the filters, uh, we apply the filter and, and weights on all the hosts in the cluster for better performance and we want to have a better grasp of how the, uh, the cluster behaves we have a containers which are called cluster policies. For each, for each cluster, we can define the set of filters, set of weights, and a single load balancing per each cluster. And then we support custom properties that you can, it's kind of passed through to, to the filter and weight. This is a diagram of the new model. On the, le on the left hand side, we can see a set of hosts within the cluster. Then we apply each filter, chaining each filter one on top of the other. And then we construct a weight table, which gets us the result of uh, the selected host that we want to schedule the VM on. Uh, we had the same concept in, uh, as Nova and filters. The existing logic that we had previously which were basically validation, was uh, migrated into uh, internal filters, and we can extend it using uh, in Python using the external scheduler that I will get into later. I want to sh show you a, a really easy sample of how we can use filters. Basically, this is a filter in Python. The name of the class will be the name that we that the end, that the server gets. The properties validation are basically a set of property that you can add within the server and then the filter will get it. This is the name of the filter and this is actually the signature that you need to override in order to extend our uh, to extend a filter, to add a filter to the system. This is how you get, this is how you get the custom properties from the, in, within the filter. Basically, I didn't tell you what the filter is all about, but here you can see we get the time and if the time is within the interval that we get from the, from the user, then we Print the, the, we, we print the host, we return all the hosts that we got. If not, we just uh, remove, exclude all the hosts from the filter. That's kind of a bank example. Okay. Let's talk about the weights. Uh, it weights uh, all, the fil all the hosts that pass through the filters. We have the predefined weights that the First two are, uh, are CPU load filters, and then in 3.4, we added a lot more weight models. I said filters. Weight models, which is kind of easy now to add because we have the new architecture. Each filter can uh, uh, have factors. It, 
we can prioritize the, fil the sorry, filters. Each weight can have factors. We can prioritize the, factor, the weights using factors. We can also ex add external weights. Let's see another sample. In this sample, we use a connection to, our, uh, to our, the server using a, a Python SDK that we have. This SDK is backward compatible and stable. We connect to the SDK, and then the logic of, of the weight is basically we iterate over all the, uh, all the host, and we append to a list a tuple of the host ID and the weight of, the, of that host. Here it's a little bit cut, but the, host, the weight of the host is the number of active VM, VMs on that host. So. <coughs> If we have a host with, basically, it will be ordered by a uh, num uh, number of uh, running VMs within that host. Let's continue. Talk about uh, the load balancing. That, that, that's the third model we have uh, in the cluster policy. Each cluster policy can have uh, only one uh, load balancing logic. Basically, you can do whatever you want within the load balancing, connect to the SDK, and you can shut down everything, basically. But what we support internally is that the uh, load balancing logic will return a VM and a <coughs> set of hosts. I will show it in a sample later on. Uh, and we will migrate that VM, a single VM, uh, within the server. It's basically more safe to, to migrate a single VM within you know, a, a period of time, not to cause a migration rust, and I don't know, uh, use all our resources for that. It's pretty not safe to do that. You also have a pretty fine load balancing uh, within, over it. The two legacy ones on CPU and now added in 3.4, even distribution one that we, even VM distribution that we didn't have. The same uh, balancing sample that I want to show, as I showed earlier, is we get the same numbers that we want to shut down all the VMs, but in this example, we will actually do that and not exclude hosts that uh, prevent users from running hosts, uh, VMs like in the filter example. Here we will show how in that hour, in the wake up hour, we will basically uh, get all the hosts and if it's wake up hour, we will activate all the hosts. If we need to sleep and the uh, uh, then we will connect using our SDK and get all the VMs from that host. We will stop all the VMs and we'll deactivate the host. Same bank uh, example. This is how we use it internally to migrate VMs. You get, uh, according to some uh, logic, you get the overloaded host. It's a code snippet. Then you select, here it's random, the first VM on that host. Then we actually print it because we're using, we're using SCDIO to, to get the data uh, from, the, from the model and we return it and we return a write listed host, which is kind of a filter, the first filtering we do before we activate uh, the filter and weights and the normal process that we do. Basically, as I said, we have a cluster policy, which is a container for all the filters and weights and a single loading ba uh, balancing logic. And we have two optimizations for a cluster policy. Uh, speed and overbooking. Basically, we run the, each time we schedule a VM, we run it one by one because we want to prevent uh, overbooking 
the same, we want to, we want to guarantee the same uh, resources for, for each VM. If we will uh, try to schedule two VMs together, we can fail because they, they, bo they both see the same uh, resources. So basically the speed optimization is to exclude the way of the, of the hosts. So later on, the load balancing will do the weighing for us and balance out the, the, the cluster for us. And the overbooking is to emit the, I don't know, the, just be able to paralyze this, the scheduling uh, process. Let's see if we can have, show those pictures within over it. Okay. No. Okay, this is over. It. The VM is, you know, because of Wi Fi and, and VPN, the VM is unknown. It's running somewhere. Okay. Here I configure. That's it. Here I can configure a new cluster policy. Can give it a name like the shutdown one. I can uh, add the external filter that I've added to the system, the shutdown host filter, to the enabled filters. Uh, as a weight, I uh, will give uh, optimal for power saving. That's try to aggregate the, all the VMs for within a single host as much as possible. Then I will uh, select that I, uh, the balancer that I uh, created earlier. I can give it wake up power like 8 a.m and shut down our eight, press OK, <coughs> should be created. OK, I don't know what happened. Just a second. What? Okay, let's go back to the... Uh, it takes some time, actually. No, no, it shouldn't take some time. What? Yeah, I'm not connected to the VPN. It talks about some time. No, no, the v something happened to the VPN. doesn't like me. Yeah, I have, screen I have screenshots, but you know... Maybe it will work. Second, okay, let's take a look at the screen. It works, believe me. <laughs> okay, we were. We were here. Wait a second, I'm connected. No, still no. Never, never mind. I will show you that one. Then you go to cluster. No, still not working. Okay, forget about it. Okay, I create the cluster policy that I've showed you. Then I created to a cluster that I already defined, so all the hosts within that cluster will act according to that cluster policy. Okay, let's talk about how it's implemented the, in you know, the back. It's disabled by default. Uh, whoever wants to extend to add filters should be able to know how to install the external scheduler. 
the Excel scheduler is a separate process uh, written in Python. We externalize it because we want to guarantee the engine safetyness. You know, if a user writes a code, it can be dangerous to, to the system. We want to allow other long languages as well. Uh, if you know, the over it in, is written in Java. So, and this model is, is written in Python. And going forward, we want to, to uh, support uh, SAS, which is kind of a scheduling as a service. Yeah, that's what it is. But, oh, well, yeah. It's a separate RPM. You need to uh, manually install it. Uh, how it works, basically it's initialized, it runs, it reads from a local directory all the filters, uh, weights and, and balancing logic that you, you wrote. Then it's publishing an internal API, the engine, the server reads it and then it waits for uh, fi calls from the engine for filtering, weighing and balancing. This is how it looks like when it's loaded, uh, the filter and load balancing here. Okay, uh, back to the users list. Now we can easily write a filter that, uh, that maximizes the number of running uh, VMs per <coughs> host. Okay, pretty early. Okay, to sum it up, uh, we support uh, easy Python uh, plugins for you to use uh, for VM scheduling. Uh, you, can, you can manage a separate policy per each cluster for each group of hosts. And every version that comes out for over it gets new models for scheduling. Questions? Yes. So the question is that I have the possibility to read from what the hypervisor provides, uh, memory utilization, CPU utilization. Yeah. Um, since you have a Python extensive API, if I got it right, yeah. you may have the possibility to know if the storage behind or the storage framework behind is constrained. So you have the possibility to say, all right, do a storage migration, these virtual machines to the other uh, storage, which is SSD based or whatever. Yeah. So you just need, for example, to have a good talk with all the storage big guys and find more things about their, their IOPS and what we are doing on their storage. Yeah. You have to get that information, right? Basically... Yeah, because we have the memory, we have the CPU, maybe we have some store, some network information about throughputs and stuff. Yeah. So what's left behind is the IOPS and the quality of the storage. You can think of whatever, you know, you all heard a question? I think so. Yeah. I think you, in, within, you know, when you extend. For the next question. Okay. You can do whatever you want when you extend, you know, a filter or when you basically can connect to every provider or use any SDK that you like. So, what we provide within the, the engine is all that you ask, you know, memory and, and CPU load, and if you want to connect to other external provider, that it's your own choice. So, that I answer. Hi. Um, so we had a few guys in the Overt workshop in Bangalore, and they were asking us to connect the scheduler to a BMC system that is monitoring extra uh, parameters. For example, they can monitor um, the CPU temperature and the fan speed, and they can actually predict that if the fan, fan speed is constant or zero, and the CPU temperature is high, that host is going to crash and burn in a few minutes. So what they asked from us is to give them a list of hosts, and they can actually blacklist some of them because they are aware of more information than what Overt should have. And there are so many other examples which are very similar. 
Uh, for example, Cisco has very similar concepts. They actually want to blacklist some of the hosts because the networking is going to go down there. There are a lot of very similar scenarios in very big enterprises. This is actually highly wanted. Absolutely, sounds promising. Yeah. So now you have the power. You can actually do it yourself. Well, my first idiot simple question yeah. was, all right, I know about my CPU, my memory. Uh, maybe I know about my networking because we do the networking. So the next good thing is, if I had the storage IO information or information that had to do with the quality of my storage, perhaps I could utilize uh, multi-tiering in a storage or uh, storage remotion of a virtual machine from one place to the other. That could be nice with this engine. Thank you. I think it's it's uh, twenty past twenty past six. My talk. If I'm okay. Wrong. okay so the last one finished earlier. Yeah. So if you want, we can be at the Yeah, yeah, it would be better.
Okay. You may have to move the mic. So test, test, can you hear me? Is it okay? Perfect.
OK. So welcome, everyone. Um,